Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're finally taking a look at the Assault Angels B kit here. So if you guys are paying attention, this is a kit that you've probably seen back here on my shelf for a while. I've been putting it off, putting it off, building it, finally got around to building it. And it just so happens that right when I was building mine, what happened to come in the mail? But another one! So I've actually got two of these now, which means that the extra one I'll just give away to one of you. So here's how you guys can enter to just basically take this extra one off my hands and that is just uh, leave a comment down below saying that you would like to have the kit and that's really about it. You can subscribe as well too, that would be really appreciated, liking the video, uh, sharing the video will probably hurt your chances to win but you know share the video if you want as well too. That does of course help me out so if you want to help me out that'd be great of you guys to also share the video but I'll wait about a week or so and then just choose one random comment and then get in touch with that person and give it to them for free. So there you go. Anyway for today though let's go ahead and get on with the unboxing and review of the Assault Angels B. So once again we got some beautiful box art here on the front and as you can see not only is it similar like what we've seen with the Attack Girls line and the Megami device line where the illustration is glossy and the background is got a matte finish which in this case is white so it's not really easy to tell but uh, it, that is what's going on there but you can also see that the illustration is also kind of embossed in the box so it has a kind of really cool look to that when it hits the light. Kind of interesting and then just really cool artwork here down here you got some logos this is made by a nuke matrix in the assault angels i guess is the sort of a line of these but i believe this is the first and only one that's come out thus far but as i said this kit has been out for a little while so you guys have probably seen it around anyway so there's a look on the side you got a different pose a uh, different illustration from what's on the front so that's also very cool then here on the bottom of the box you got to look at what the girl figure is going to look like in the unarmored form so just kind of without all the armor and everything on there just kind of the slim version of that. There's a look at your different faces of it, the personal profile of B, that's all there in Chinese. And then over here a look at the kind of face change that you can do, the different hair piece there for that, and just with the kind of B unit equipped on there. And as you know the other version of the kit that I have does not have that extra hair part, so I think at different points when they've re-released this kit they've changed certain bits about it just as far as like a, a couple little option parts might be different between the different releases of this, so that hair part might not be included then with this version of the kit I believe. Going to the top of the box then we got a look of this with its helmet on and then of all the different weapons and stuff that you get, you get a pistol, a submachine gun, an anti-armor sniper rifle, and then for the B unit you've got some long range assault jamming bombs, some multifunctional guided missiles, and then also firing Vulcan cannon there as well too, so you got lots of weaponry that can pop out and shoot out of the B unit there, so very cool. On the inside here, of course, we're just going to have all our runners and everything. So let's get all that stuff out of the way and find our way to the instruction manual. On the front of the instruction manual, you've got the same illustration that was on the side of the box, but now you've got a more full version of that illustration there. Very nice. On the back, just the Assault Angels logo. Going in here on the front, just basically the same stuff that was on the outside of the box there, but down here you've got sort of an alternate version of that. I was going to say alternate color scheme, but just the design of the suit is also slightly different in there as well too, but I guess that maybe this was like the concept art for it or something, but that was cool. And then some sort of uh, manga panels down here, some comic panels, so I don't know if there's actually any comic that is related with this or if this is just like some sketches or whatever, I don't know actually offhand, but it does look pretty cool. Over here, just again, some more information, again like what we saw on the outside of the box, about the bee and then some other just different uh, images showing some of the gimmicks and things, details of that. So then we've got our parts list all there, good and well, and then it's just on with the construction. So you'll build your character figure first and then the armor version of the character figure, then the B unit, then the weapons, and the base, and all that, and then you get all the way back here to the back. We've got a bunch more photos of the completed kit here, and looks very nice. I mean, all the different weapons and everything, all the different poses and stuff they can do with that. I think it's going to be a pretty cool kit, no doubt. And then we've got some more photos here on the opposite side of that page. So if you kind of struggle with posing your kits sometimes, this is a great reference for you. Just see some different example poses that you can do with this. And then you get the line art over here showing you where you're going to place a couple of the decals, I guess. So you'll have some decals for this, so there's where those are going to go. And let's go ahead and check those out. So here are your decals. As you can see, mostly eye decals, and there are going to be a lot more options than what you have actually pre-printed on your uh, printed faces. So if you want to use one of these different ones, you got some options there. You also got some different logos and things that will go around on the kit as well there too. 
And so let's go ahead and take a close up look at our face options. I gotta say the printing of them looks quite nice. I'm still not sure about like the actual design of them. I mean, I don't know, these always tend to look a bit awkward. Not as nice as the Kurobukiya ones in terms of just the design of the faces. But as far as like just like the printing quality, it all looks pretty good. Uh, looks sharp, the colors look really nice in there. So there's your third face option there with the kind of open mouth, sort of angry look on it. So you know, look pretty good. A couple other bits you have in here also is these little round red kind of jewel stickers, I guess probably for your cameras. All our hand options, which look pretty standard, probably just copied from your standard Kodobuki hands where you've got holding hands, closed fists, open hands, open resting hands, trigger finger hands, and then it looks like also some peace sign hands in there as well too. Then we've got our hair parts, which are in light gray, which seem to be just in that kind of like softer plastic material there. And also this weird looking kind of fuzzy thing. I think that's just supposed to go around her neck to give her that sort of like bee fuzz sort of around her neck. And I should also note that the other version of this kit that I have didn't come with this. So that's only included in, in this one here. That said, instead, what did come in the other version that's not in this one, so the two boxes have two kind of different exclusive things. This is the exclusive, I guess, item from the other box, just like this little art card here, which is very cool. Nice illustration there, and like the signature is like kind of cut off from the side, but I mean, it's a pretty cool illustration card. Then we've got this piece here for the base where you need to actually pop this open, and this kind of printed B design card goes inside there and then you close that up in the base. So it's kind of cool in that actually you could change that out and put something else in there or something if you wanted to or a different like just cut out to printed design or something that you print off and put inside the base there. So that's kind of interesting. Then getting into our runners here, runner A is just a big runner full of a bunch of white parts. Runner B is going to be in this really nice so orange yellow color for some of that B flavoring. Same color here for runner B1 as well as runner B2 which is just some more of our orange yellow colored parts. We're going to see one then switching it up to this nice kind of slightly bluish purple kind of color there. It's very nice. And then we've also got runner C2 for a few more of those parts. And that same color is carried on to runner D1 as well. And then we have runner D2, which is not a copy of anywhere of the runner. It's just for some reason that's how they numbered or lettered them. Anyway, there's a few more parts on there in this purplish color. Runner E is in this really nice uh, injected metallic kind of gunmetal color. It looks pretty cool for some of the weapons parts and internal joint parts, things like that of the B unit. And we got some more of that carried on here to the F runner as well, just some more weapons parts and things. We've got two of this F runner. Runner G then here is in black. We got some B parts as well as some leg parts and some other parts of the body here as well. Runner G1 then is some more parts, looks like mostly for the arms, maybe a couple parts there for the legs as well too. Runner H1 we've got here for just some parts for some wrist joints and also some parts that'll go in the leg there as well. But you've got this in two colors, black and purple. One for, I guess, if you have it in the armored state, you use black. In the unarmored state, you use purple, I believe. Same thing here for runner H2 as well. You've got black and purple versions of that, depending on which way you're gonna build up the kit. Runner I then, just a couple more pieces here in black, looks like for the shoulder joints. Runner J is our clear pieces for the base, so connector pieces to connect multiple bases together, and then the actual pieces for the arm of the base. Looks like you got a couple extra, so you should have plenty of room to go with those. And you've actually got two of this J runner, so lots of option arm parts there. Runner J1 is our clear B-wing parts, and I just wanted to show this to you guys, hopefully you guys can see that, and it seems to be kind of sprayed, coated with a little bit kind of iridescent kind of clear over the top of it, so they look quite nice. It's not just plain clear, there is a little bit of some coating on that. The runner K in this very long runner here is some weapons parts in this metallic sort of dark gunmetal color. And then runner K1 the same, but in a little bit lighter color, so you will have some kind of two different colors going on there for your weapons. Runner L is going to be all your skin tone parts for the kits, basically the thighs and the upper arms and the neck. And then runner L1 is going to be your blank faces, so if you want to use some of those different ID cows, you can use those on these faces here, as well as some other different head parts. Then we've got some clear blue parts here for runner M1. Runner M2 is then just going to be like some clear gray, some kind of smoky clear parts there. And lastly, runner M3 is just going to be your little B antennas for the head. So there you have it guys, as you can see lots of parts in there, lots of weapons, so we should have a lot of cool things to play around with this kit. Let me go ahead and get her built up and then we'll see how she looks. 
Alright guys, so here is what the B girl is going to look like when all built up. Obviously missing the actual B equipment and all the other equipment and everything, but I wanted to just show you guys just what the figure looks like first, just so you can get a good look around that. Then we'll take a look at all the equipment and everything, all the accessories, because we do have a ton of accessories with this kit. So it's definitely going to be one of the best things about this, is just all the different accessories that you have. I feel like the face is still not quite as nice as some other kits out there similar like this, other Mecha Musume kits like what we usually typically see like from Kotobukiya, but not too bad looking for the face. And of course we do have some other different options there as well too. So I think there's still plenty to appreciate as far as just all the stuff you get in the box. So let's go ahead and check out all those accessories. So aside from our different hands and face options, which we'll see on the kit later on as we go through some poses, we do also have of course the unarmored versions of the arms and legs, which again also we'll see Later on, uh, once we're trying out some different poses of the kit, I'll show you guys how the unarmored version of the kit looks. And so there's just a look at that. And then just compared to the arms, it's just slightly less armored than what we have here. And you get the base, which is kind of interesting how you have that B logo that goes in there, except that like where you plug on the stand is actually needs to go in one of these corners. So you can't have the stand like centered with the logo. It has to either be off to one side or, you know, totally off to a different side or something like that. So it really kind of seems like they should have had the logo turned in a way that so that you could actually place it so that the, then the stand could be centered on top of there. It's a bit strange. So our main accessory then is just going to be sort of the uh, B abdomen unit here, which has the wings, which again, that iridescent kind of finish on the wings does look quite nice. You have some thruster bells down here at the back and then just kind of these main two thruster pods here on the side. So you can build this up like this without any connection piece on the front, just this clear black plastic piece on the front there, as if this is just gonna be flying on its own. If you did want to have this connected onto the actual kit, you need to use a different part on the front of there. So rather than that clear round part on the front, you use this one, which actually has this part on it. Let me just swap that out to show you here. So this is just another alternate form where it just kind of has this different clear part on the front of there. You could have it just flying on like this. And this also gives you the opportunity to put this on a stand right there or remove this black clear part off the front of there. And that's how you can plug this onto the back of the kit where we're going to. You also have a hard point where you can plug this onto an action base right here underneath. And that also includes this handle, but you have this alternate part which you could use if you didn't want to have the handle and didn't want to have that uh, attachment point there you could just use this just plain black piece like this on there instead so you have that option and then you do also have another option of connection piece which just gives you a little bit different kind of connection there this unit itself just looks really cool also those clear blue parts look really nice over on these side bits you can open these up a little bit just be careful not to overextend those but those open up like so and then the other thing that it can do is expand the front and the back should not come off so pull that apart carefully i guess there you go so that expands out giving you a whole bunch of hard points in there and that is for attaching your other attachments so you've got two of these kind of like uh, missiles that you just can stick in there to give those the appearance that they're popping out of there you also got these kind of like um, which i'm guessing are supposed to just be kind of like micro missiles or something that can also just be stuck in there and then your third option is what looks to be probably just some sort of like uh just gun machine gun or just kind of auto cannon sort of thing that you can attach into there as well too so you can just plug those onto basically anywhere around on the abdomen part here then for her actual handheld weapons we've got a bunch of different ones here so here is the machine gun with a little bit of part separation or color separation in there you can see like a two-tone silver which looks pretty cool and i should note too that you only get one of these in the box unfortunately even though there's a picture in the manual that shows her with two of them you only get one that you can build and for her knife you've got two like ones for in use where it's the full knife it's just handheld and then two stored versions where it's not actually there's no blade in there it's just this kind of empty piece there just to look like the knife is stored but this has a little connection piece that will allow you to attach that onto one of the hard points most likely you're going to want to plug that onto the side of the thigh right there but and then two pistols with the mirrored connection pieces there so one for the left one for the right you just take this out and this is just one single piece so no seam lines or anything with that just this tiny little pistol piece there which is very cool you're going to want to drill a hole there for the barrel of that as it doesn't have one included and then finally the long rifle which is also quite cool and it's designed it looks very interesting and for the end you have an optional barrel here so you can choose whether you just want just like the straight barrel or this type barrel tip at the end so you can have an option of switching that out if you'd like and last thing then would be her alternate head which is just like a helmet but it's just an alternate head that you just swap out entirely with a couple of really cool clear parts here instead of the black antenna it's just got these clear antenna and that clear part there for the visor with some nice detail 
up underneath, but so this is very cool. And one last accessory, actually I almost forgot about here is this clear kind of syringe looking bit, which I guess is supposed to play on the whole bee stinger thing, right? That's why it's got this, but it's an, it's an odd weapon to be included. There's not really too much that you can do with it other than just hold it in the hand. You can't like uh, attach it on anywhere or anything like that, but it is also included. So alright guys, as we get into checking out some poses and trying out some of the many different weapons and things that we have, a couple of issues that I am running into is that uh, number one, holding on to the machine gun and the sniper rifle is pretty difficult just because the hands, although we have lots of hand options, they're not really made for that type of handle that you've got on those weapons. So the weapons are cool, the hand options are plentiful, there's not really a great combination between those. You can get it to hold the weapons, uh, but just not very well. So I feel like probably for the hands, they just kind of copied the Kodobukiya hands. They really should have also included a new set of specific hands for holding on to that particular type of handle for those weapons, and that would just make life a lot easier for us trying to pose the kit. Um, the other thing that's a bit awkward is just the, like all the weapons and stuff that pop out of the uh, backpack or the a bee abdomen, the back part, uh, work really well and they look great when the bee, that bee part is flying on its own, but when it's actually attached onto the back of the girl, it looks a bit awkward because it's there, you're not really going to be able to fire anything off the back of that without just firing it right into herself, basically. She's kind of like blocking the line of fire. Uh, with having those attached kind of onto her backpack like that. So a little bit awkward, but again, I mean, you guys have a lot of different options to play around with this, so you can figure out some cool poses with this, definitely. It's not uh, that limited. There's just a few things that you might find a bit awkward to work with while trying to get a cool pose with this, but there's still plenty of options available. So a very cool kit, definitely a really unique one. I like the whole kind of insect uh, combination with this. I think pairing with the sort of a bee aesthetic was a pretty cool, cool choice. Overall, the articulation of the figure is all very standard so that's not an issue. The stability of it also, the fitting issues and everything is all good. You don't really have any particular parts that are super loose or super tight or anything like that. So there's a couple of parts on like the backpack that have like really small parts. And I mean like the backpack isn't like actually on her back. A couple of really tiny little parts in there you want to be careful of. But overall I feel like a very solid kit. So definitely not one that would be too worried about it being too finicky or anything like that. It's a pretty standard uh, kit as far as if you built any other similar kits like this, even the ones from Kurobukiya. So that's going to be it guys, you can check out this kit and many others like it there at USA Gundam store. As you guys know, the link and the coupon code for you to use there is down in the video description below. So head down there, head over there to the website, check it out. And thank you to them as always for making this review possible. And then of course, thank you to you guys as well too for your support, liking the video, commenting, subscribing, all that's greatly appreciated. So until next time guys, hope you're all having a great day. I'll see y'all later. Bye bye.